I last uh, talked about uh, the superposition principle and uh, this is after we had uh, two charges Q1 and Q2 and when we looked at these charges we said that uh, if we are looking at the force Q2 is imposing on Q1 we say that this is, uh, sorry, this is the, if this is the distance between them, then the, the unit direction vector R would be from 2 to 1 this way, so it is R21. And then here we had uh, R12 roof or cup. And then we said that if we are to look at the force on Q1, due to Q2, we say that this is F2 acting on 1 equal to K Q1, Q2 over R1, 2 square and then R2, 1 roof whereas the force on Q2 due to Q1 will be F1, 2 equal to K, Q1 uh, Q2 over R12 squared R R12 cup but this was for the case of two forces I mean the two uh, charges uh, we say we use the word point to assume that they are as small as possible just like we say the particle of mass falling so a mass of 40 is almost uh, 10 jerrycans or 2 big jerrycans, eh? 40 kilograms. And you are saying it is a particle. And we know that particles are always small things. You remember how you are doing me mechanics? You talk of a particle in mechanics, but you are saying over 100 kilograms. Sure, it's a ganja bag. You are talking of a ganja bag of maize or of, uh, beans which is weighing 100 kilograms and you are calling that ganja bag a particle what would you call a granule or a seed of uh, one granule of uh, iron maize or beans you would fail to get the right word to use uh, for that so we say point charge and then we say that the point charge of maybe 40 uh, microcoulombs 40 you are already having this much but you are saying is a point Chart. So we only use those words to make sure that we do our business uh, in that sense. And then we agree that if we now have uh, a bunch of charges within the vicinity, and yes, uh, the other day we wrote that the electrostatic force, the electrostatic force, you wrote this, but I'm just trying to make sure we follow together on the charge, Q naught due to a distribution <coughs> of point charges QI where I is 1, 2, 3, so on up to N at a position at a position Ri from the point charge Q naught. This force is a vector sum. Is a vector sum of individual forces. Of individual forces exerted. Exiled individually, exiled individually on Q naught.
So you know very well that uh, the, the, the credibility of Makerere University would depend on how our graduates, individual by individual, behave outside there in the field. And uh, you to graduate as somebody who is important, your, your grades will depend on the individual grades you will get from us, the individual lecturers. So that's what we mean by the vector sum. That as these charges are within the vicinity, it will depend on, you have a charge here, you have another charge here, you have another one here, you have another one here. Depending on their polarities, then the behavior of this system will be different. One will be attracting the other, the other will be paying the other. So, as this Q nut is uh, in a given distribution, and as you can uh, remember from electricity and magnetism, you have a distribution which can be discrete, where we can count the amount of charges within a given vicinity, or it could be continuous. And uh, the continuous will depend on a different time, either it could be linear continuous, uh, or it would be continuous in a linear form, could be in a surface form, or could be in a volume. Okay? So, but let's now start for, start with for a discrete distribution of charge. So you have a bunch of charge, uh, point charges distributed discrete wise that we can count them. So for such a discrete distribution we shall take our Q nut somewhere here and say that uh, we have the i's, the qi's, which was q1 for i is equal to 1, q2 for i is equal to 2, q3 for i is equal to 3, e, d, c, e, d, c up to, you can say up to q, and so this depending on the, uh, and we can say that uh, this is R, so the R is I R, I from the I to O, but if I can take for this distance here between Q2 and Q0, this would be distance Q2, 0, because we are talking of the charges QI acting on the Q0 which is dropped within the vicinity within the vicinity of this charge to that. So the charge here will experience a force and this force uh, the force F on Q not is given by F is equal to the, the summation from the I is equal to 1 up to N of them. Then we have our blue force, which we already have in our previous work, which is Q I, Q naught over R, I zero squared. Then we have our R, I not roof. Of course, where we, if we borrow back, where K is the same as 1 over 4 pi, epsilon not the constant. So we, we, we just know uh, this, but we need now to make sure that we visualize it from an individual point of V, I an mean, uh, point, individual point of, of view of each of these charges. And uh, this individual view or point of view 
will give us an idea that this implies that this force is the same as uh, Q naught over 4 pi epsilon naught because Q naught will be common to all of them. And um, then we have our Q1 over R10 squared, R10 roof plus Q2 over R20 squared, R20 cup or roof. I will stop at 2 and go on and go on up to QN over Rn0 uh, squared, then Rn0 cup. And uh, this would imply that our F is equal to Q naught E. Because from your electricity and magnetism, you remember that the, <coughs> the charge divided by the square of the distance between uh, the, the point where you are feeding the electric field, uh, then you get that divided by uh, 4 pi epsilon naught, uh, then you get what we call electric density. And uh, we say that where our electric field density at a given point is the same as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught summation i is equal to 1 up to n qi over ri squared then r root i for any point at any point p so we are of course e p where and where this e p is the electric field in density is the electric field in density at a point at a point in space P this P here. So we could say that this is the, our point our point B in space, does it matter? Do we need to really have to put it there? And when you go to introduction to electrodynamics by uh, brief, you'll be able to get a good understanding about these parts. And this is just a recap or a review of the Tristan Mahes. My assumption, which is actually right, is that some of you never saw me in the Tristan magnetism, so I can't say we saw, because semester system, uh, you know, qualifies you not to use what was seen before. Everything is new when the semester begins. I'm supposed to assume I've never seen you and, and you don't know anything concerning <coughs> Although, in the curriculum, electricity magnetism course is a prerequisite to electromagnetism. So this was for a discrete course, I mean a distribution of charge, uh, of charges, where you can count them. If you can count them from 1, 2, 3, 4, E, D, C, up to N of them, then you can sum the effect of each of these charges. But there is a time when you might find that either they are distributed along a line where we need to get elemental charge and then get the effect of this elemental charge and total up. It could be a given surface and then you get an elemental surface and also discover how much you could get. Or it could be in a given volume and then you also get your elemental volume and after getting elemental volume you consider it as 
an element of the church. If you can get the effect this element is given, then you can get the total sum of when you get a total of all the elements making up the distribution. And this would account for the, uh, the charge density, linear charge density. This would uh, be due to the uh, surface charge density. And then this one would be due to the volume charge density. And because it is continuous, from being a discrete, this would mean that you are trying to stretch it out and getting approximation, so you have to stretch this one a little bit, pull it down and pull this one a little bit up, you may not be lucky to make it straight, and then it will be a bit like that. So the summation would uh, translate from the sum for discrete to an integral for canyons. So for polyons, for canyons distribution of charge, then we would have that uh, one for when it is uh, on a linear or if it is a linear distribution of charge. Then we have that uh, the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of qi of uh, ri squared ri roof translates to integral over the line. And then we have that uh, this is r roof over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared lambda, yeah. <clears throat> or you would have uh, written it as, if you want, you can write it as lambda DL, the and then you put your R at the end. So basically, I'm having a distribution of line charge, and we can say it can use, and can use this side, up to, for example, when you take a coaxial cable, uh, taking a telecommunication signal, it can continue up to the end, some far away. If you look at cable TV, like in a hotel, and uh, you, you imagine where the dish is at the top, and each room is having coaxial cables, where you tap the signal for the, uh, for the TV, the distance here can move on, on and on as far as possible. But all we need is to know the elemental charge and the effect this elemental charge would be having on our point P in space with coordinates X, Y, Z and at a distance R from such a point. Where lambda, this lambda here is called the linear charge so from the uh, from the line we're gonna be moving on to the the surface and then finally go to the void. So of course this would imply that the electric field immensity at a given point P is uh, at P would be the same as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral over the line and then it would be I'll insist on R root over sorry R squared then lambda yeah because the QI is the same as this element of charge for a linear distribution of charge 
and we know that the uh, element of charge is default. So this small part is the air. Charge density, linear charge density lambda is the same as charge over Is it charge or? Yes. So the charge, the elemental charge, if we say the Q, which we are feeling here, would be the same as charge density. And density is the mass over. So if we are talking of linear charge density, is the charge over the line, the line length or the, the distance. And this would be our, implying that our the Q, the elemental charge felt at this point is the same as the lambda d. So that's why we have to get our dq here, which is our lambda d here. The elemental charge, then in the great elements of this charge, to get the total charge. Of course, I will define this as R car is the unit. Uh, vector, or unit sometimes unit direction of vector from the element of charge, from the element of charge now from the element of charge. The L, it is, the L is the one which is given, uh, it is not from elemental charge, but the element of charge. charge. The element that is constituting the charge. The L, and uh, to the uh, observational point, to the observational point, to the observational point, uh, and then the observation point and the R is the distance from the element of charge to point P. I'm just trying to be a bit detailed so that uh, but if you go and read you know read through brief is very nice the way he puts his points he makes life very easy it's like you are reading a novel he will tell you now I'm going to make sure these charges are called point charges just because I want you to understand and when you place them so it's like the flow is nice I would urge you to go and read that book and I'm also uploading it on the way. So two these people. You the men with my machine, I bought it because it has a clock. Now you make my phone to gather dust. Okay, so the second part is when we look at the surface. Surface distribution of charge. And for this surface, if we took a surface, we take an element of surface, and uh, we consider our observation point P, in a space with coordinates x, y, z and uh, with a unit direction vector r cap and then we have the distance from the element and uh, to the uh, point of uh, observation being or having a position vector r and then we have uh, the element of or the element of being s so we can find the electric field density, which is due to the uh, element of the charge. 
And when we integrate it, we will get the total shell. So if we took uh, this whole space, half an element, a bunch of them, <coughs> by integration from the trapezoid rule, then we can be able to find the total area of this surface when we do the energy. So the electric field energy, the electric field energy E at C is the same as one over four pi of psi on that integral over the surface normally we can do it as a double integral because we are integrating over ds or sometimes in some books it is da or in other books you might find that it is uh, d small a but area normally is the same as x times y so if you took it as elemental area would be having elemental product of elemental parts of the area, so you'll be having the x, the y, and if you were to integrate over the surface s, you would use only one integral, but if you are going to integrate over uh, two of them, then you have to do one at a time, and it depends on how you arrange them. If you arrange them as in over x first and over y next, then you have to take in interest of what the integral will be. So if you integral is having the x and y, then you first look at which is closed. So you say, I am doing, because x is here, and this, so you first do this integration, and then finally what you get on uh, this, you do the integration on the outside uh, integral. And I uh, the, the instruction whether x or y is in the outside. And uh, this would be, you know, integral, if I maybe use a single one and then I write here surface in order to avoid the uh, problem. So this would be over the surface, the S is the element of area, the sigma is the uh, surface charge density, which is the same as the charge, elemental charge, divided by the elemental, implying that the elemental charge will be sigma d, and then I will come up with uh, sigma ds divided by r squared r roof. Of course, we've uh, come up with a new parameter, so where sigma is called the surface the surface charge density and our roof so our cap is the unit is the unit vector from the male surface, the male surface, up to, or oh, which is, yes. Now this is where we got, uh, we finished when it is along the line. Uh, we've now gone to when it is a surface, now if it is like a sphere or in any other shape, in form of a volume, we can also call suit and be able to determine the amount of electric field density that is produced. Because we are looking at electromagnetism, we shall be more concerned with the uh, electric field lines that are coming out of this surface. And then this will always constitute a potential. After getting the potential, we look at the 
Quraysh has work done, if you remember, and uh, then we shall utilize Laplace and uh, Poisson to solve these potential problems. So what we are trying to do is to build the background of how these potential problems come about, as in to be able to solve them using the Laplace and the Poisson equation. So, for the volume, for the volume charge distribution, then we got our volume, I can draw it like an overcare almost, and then I will take the menu in form of the manner of volume being in form of like a cube. I have my observation point P in a space of X, Y, Z. And then I have uh, my R roof or cap. I have R. And then I have uh, D tau. And for those of you who are seeing me for the first time, I always teach your friends how to write tau without any problem, so you write a T and then rub. So do you have a, a what rubs pen? <laughs> so that means you have to have it in your mind that I'm writing half a T to create your tau. Although you find some people trying to make it looking very nice, but I would be comfortable with just a half T. So the electric field density at point P would be the same as uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integrated over the volume tau and then we have our rho d tau over r squared and all this acts in the direction of r which is the direction from the manner charge up to the, or to the observation point uh, which is our P here. So now we know uh, a couple of things about uh, charge distributions, whether they are in, uh, in uh, one, in a linear form along the line, whether it is a surface distribution of charge or whether they are a volume. And all this came by after seeing them in a discrete form. Basically, we have about seven minutes to be six. I have to rush somewhere. I made an appointment and I told them I would be there in time. There's a lot of jam in town. So, Now, if there is a border which can carry my car, then that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> if there is a border which can carry my car, I'll go. I'll put it on my car and then I go. Pardon? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Okay, any questions? <laughs> so, we've agreed that, uh, what do you think? Should I knock you out by majority or by the structure of the timetable? Yeah, there's no clash. Your timetable teacher was there and we agreed. But you start at three. Can't he start at two? Can't he dodge the other? <laughs> well, my point is that uh, uh, two hours are enough, no problem. I have no problem with that. But the more time we have, the better we because the more time we will have is when we will be relaxed. I teach for one hour, one and a half, 
have a, about five minutes break and then you go easy yourselves, I make a joke because normally I will be coming with my big bottle of water, even today I had more than one. <laughs> but because I'm going very early, I didn't want to bring it here. It would be heavy for me. So you trust me, I will be able to do the business uh, with that. So I don't want to go on this now, but I'm not going to put it. So I'm almost, we have gotten the uh, revision of the uh, Kulu. We've looked at uh, actually pretty nicely. We've looked at the effect of having a, this, uh, you know, two charges. One charge and a point charge. Then a bunch of charges and a point charge in the discrete form. We've graduated from the discrete form to a, a volume, I mean a continuous distribution of charge. Now we're going to the laws that will govern this electric field immensely. How does it behave in a given volume? And then we look at Gauss's law, Stokes law, uh, to mention by the few. But any questions, especially the new people? Those who are meeting me for the first time. Yesterday we had a meeting with the uh, freshers, and uh, when the other men have not come, there are two or three who were there. So one of them I was asking him questions. I said, But you are saying this course, uh, that uh, this course is a mathematics course and it is first year, but you don't know. I said, Of course, I don't know. His attitude was like, so I, I told him, you don't know me. You better, when you meet people whom you don't know, you better behave nicely, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know how you meet them. You see, it is bad to reach an office and then you ask the, the boss, the CEO that, excuse me, sir, uh, is the boss allowed? Just because you hold him on the secretary's door, I mean the uh, desk and... Uh, <laughs> because like uh, one time a guy, a parent found a head teacher in, in track shoot in the compound and asked him, excuse me, car, you know how this, I forgot my car key, but I can use this one. So he was swinging the keys like, uh, excuse me, uh, is the headmaster around? He <laughs> 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 was shaking his keys like this. Excuse me, is the headmaster around? So the headmaster looked at me and he said, Who are you? He said, I'm a parent to so and so. The guy was in the office, brought a, a suspension, an indefinite suspension letter. <laughs> Vacate his school. So it's not nice to pass a man in the, in, in, on the on you come, you don't even say hi to the guy you call at the reception, you <laughs> slap the door again, and then you, the place is empty, and then you come back. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> is the CEO around? <coughs> How do you think this guy will feel? Even if it was actually a secretary or a receptionist, and because you deal with the boss, you or you are friends, you bumped in. If you came back now to ask, I would say, I would just actually keep quiet. I wouldn't say anything. You are sure of the person. Try to keep, uh, say, keep not cool. Eh? That fresh, I really, uh, he bothered my head. Eh? To make sure that I tell him, at least I was in a tie and a coat. Uh, he would give me that benefit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we meet uh, Monday, and uh, for two weeks or three, for the rest of September, I will abide five to seven, five to seven.